What's up guys, Tao here. Uh, so a couple of weeks ago, I installed the uh, macOS High Sierra on this uh, ThinkPad X220 uh, laptop just to try out how stable the system is. Uh, it turns out overall the system uh, is really, really stable. Actually, I've seen some system uh, improvement. So uh, I decided to um, install the High Sierra on my workstation as well. So today I'll be sharing you my uh, personal experience maybe a couple of tips along the way. Um, the platform I'll be installed onto the, is the Gigabyte X99 UD4 along with the Intel i7-5820K. If you guys are interested, stay to the end. Before we go any further, I uh, just want to point out that all credits go to the uh, Hack and Dash community. Without the community, uh, this uh, video will not be possible, this tutorial won't be possible, and my workstation also won't be possible. So if you have any questions, please head to the community, look around, I'm sure you'll find a solution uh, to your uh, problem. The first step is quite straightforward. Um, you will need a real Apple computer to download a macOS High Sierra from App Store. And the method we will be using is the UniBeast plus a MultiBeast from Tony Mac uh, website. And bear in mind, you will need to register to download those uh, softwares. For the flash drive, you will need at least eight gig of free storage. And also uh, make sure you format the drive uh, as a journal and also a UGI uh, partition scheme. Uh, so be sure to uh, do that. When creating UniBeast USB installer, be sure to choose UEFI boot mode and then follow the on-screen uh, instruction and just wait for the USB drive to finish and then the drive is almost ready. In order to uh, make the USB installer bootable on the X99 system, uh, there are three key steps to make it bootable. Uh, first step is to delete a, a special driver file uh, in the EFI folder on the USB drive, and then you will need to install a special file, a special EFI file onto the same folder on the USB installer. So this is a key to make the uh, USB drive bootable on the X99 motherboard. And also there's an option you need to tick uh, within the config playlist uh, on the USB installer. Uh, the option is called MPCI equal zero uh, X2000. So this option will be uh, used to uh, boot into the uh, X99 motherboard. I will leave all the download links uh, in the description. Uh, you guys feel free to download if you wish to. For BIOS settings, uh, my experience uh, optimized the default served the purpose pretty well. Uh, there's no need to change anything in the setting. Uh, yeah, so you know if you just want to keep it simple, just use the optimized default. Upon reboot, be sure to choose the USB installer, and then you will see uh, this uh, Clover boot screen, and select the external that will boot into the USB uh, installer. Uh, and then carry on the uh, USB installation. 
When formatting the target disk, make sure to format it as a single uh, partition. If you have uh, multiple partition, uh, partitions, uh, the install uh, may be uh, stopped by it. Uh, if does happen, uh, be sure to format the entire disk as one partition. And also be sure to use the uh, journal, Mac, Mac OS journal. Uh, do not use the AFS. Uh, the system will change to FS uh, on SSD automatically. So here there's no need to change a to AFS. There's one issue I found when in trying to install the uh, macOS High Sierra uh, is that um, the system requires internet connection in order the installation go ahead. Uh, I had to uh, physically connect to the ethernet cable to the back and then the installation uh, start normal. The biggest difference uh, between uh, Sierra and High Sierra in terms of the uh, installation is that High Sierra will uh, reboot twice or three times uh, during the installation. Uh, Sierra it just goes through uh, in one go, uh, as far as I can remember. Um, I would say just be patient, um, just wait for the installation process finish, and then eventually uh, you will get into the uh, desktop. Once you are in the desktop and you are almost there, the next step is to install a multi-beast. Um, here is the list of uh, uh, options I have chosen for my hardware. Uh, if you have the same hardware, you can choose the same option. Uh, if not, uh, please choose the option according to your uh, motherboard and then the CPU and the graphics card. After multi-beast uh, successfully installed, the next important step is to copy the boot EFI file uh, onto the uh, uh, EFI uh, partition of the boot drive. Now this will make the uh, the Mac OS High Sierra bootable uh, onto the boot drive. And also delete old 64-bit uh, EFI file and that is also very very important. After these two steps, uh, now the macOS High Sierra should be fully bootable without any uh, USB installer. Uh, you can just go ahead and restart the computer and the system should boot into the uh, desktop without any issue. To download the NVIDIA web driver, simply head to a Tony Mac website to download. Uh, be sure to download the uh, appropriate uh, driver for your uh, build number. Um, for my instance, uh, is 17D47, um, but make sure you have your build number ready in order to, to download the right uh, web driver for your graphics card. After the installation and then reboot, and now you should have a native resolution support uh, in your system. For full USB 3.0 support, you will need to install a USB 3.0 driver for x99 platform, uh, so that will fully enable uh, USB 3 ports. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed the video. I really hope this video helped you guys who want to install uh, Mac OS High Sierra on the same hardware. And um, if you do have the same hardware, please leave a comment down below so we can share the experience. Uh, in my opinion, High Sierra actually uh, does improve the overall performance uh, a bit. Uh, not huge uh, difference between High Sierra and Sierra. Uh, in my opinion. However, um, if you have iPhone 8, 8 Plus and iPhone 10, if you do shoot 4K uh, within those phones uh, because the HEVC uh, or uh, H.265 codec, so the High Sierra has native support uh, of those codecs, so the 4K uh, video footage playback-wise is going to be quite smooth. I personally tried it, so it does work. Uh, it does perform better on High Sierra than on Sierra. Um, yeah, anyways, if you guys like the video, uh, please be sure to share with others so we can get the knowledge across. And for some reason, if you didn't like the video, you know what to do. Uh, and also, please don't forget to uh, click on that subscribe button to keep up with my channel uh, for future video updates. So I'm sure I will do more videos like this in the future so you guys won't miss it. So yeah, see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe.